three. My name is Ramiro Yu Estanilla Jr. And I am from the Philippines. I came to this country in 1976, February 1st, 1976. And uh, thank God today I am still here after 38 years. And uh, I have lived in Fresno for these many years. I got stuck and got in love with Fresno, California. Although I have had the opportunity to go out of California, out of town to uh, meet martial artists that are so great that I have known them uh, since uh, I came to this country. In 1941, just after the outbreak of war, I got involved in Scrima because uh, our villages, our towns were raided by, by goons or by bandits who were taking advantage of the war situation. And uh, the leaders in our community uh, encouraged all those that are able from 10 years old to any age to, to band ourselves together. And that's where I got involved in Scrima. Uh, the teachers were uh, a mixture of people, old people from the different tribes who were no longer able to go back to war, but were veterans of World War I. And they were our teachers and leaders in that back in, in the Philippines so in 1941, 42, 43, up to 45. And uh, among the teachers were my father, uh, Ramiro Abiller Estanilla Sr., and, uh, and some other guys whose names now uh, has uh, slipped my mind, but uh, in some of my literatures that I have written, I have them all in writing, and all the names, those of anyone who would like to have a copy later on of those literatures, they, they can have it uh, from me. And, uh, Bermudez, Gonzalez, uh, and um, Roque, Banay, Precious were the names of the big guys, uh, older men uh, who were about four in their 40s or 50s at the time. And uh, I was only a, a, a teenager, uh, 12 years old, 13, 14, and 15. And uh, that's where I got involved with these teachers who bonded us together to help train in order to prevent uh, our barrios and villages from being pillaged by plunderers who were bandits and taking advantage of the war situation. That's where I got involved. I happen to be practicing an art that's called Kabarwan. The word Kabarwan has several meanings. It means, uh, in contrast with the old system, it's called Kabarwan, meaning the newer one, or the modern, or the latest one. But literally, the word Kabarwan comes from two words, Ka, meaning a uh, sir, or an older person, and Barwan is, comes from the word Baron. Ka Barwan, the art of the sir barons, the art of the barons. My father was a student of a baron whose name was uh, Rigunan, Don Mariano Rigunan, and he was a baron. And the people who, back then, the Filipinos who, who were uh, simply uh, farmers, many of them are farmers, some are non-farmers, of course, when they would watch the leadership practice their art, they would often say, let us do what uh, Sir Baron Ka. Barwang was doing. And so they affiliated the name Kabarwang into Kabarwan, meaning the art of the, sir, the baron. And today, uh, when I learned the art, it was a, a compendium of the different arts of the people, some were Visayans, different tribes during the war. And the, the, it became a complex a, a, com a compendium of the different systems of the different leadership, different tribes, and it's simply called Kabarwan, the art of the barons, the leadership. And uh,
Today, I practice the art, not that it's better than the others, it's just simply different. It does not represent just one tribe, but a, a, a compendium of the different tribes or uh, tribal systems of the, the art, both weapons and non-weapons. Of course, it's a weaponry, it's a weapon-based art, because nobody goes to war, whether tribal war or invasion from, uh, from foreign invaders, Nobody goes to war empty-handed. It's all based on weapons, whether it's small weapons, st sticks, or a bow and arrow, or, or uh, sharp weapons, bladed weapons. When I came to this country in 1976, I found that uh, the old, there were older guys who were uh, of the same tribe and different tribes uh, from me, some were Visayan, some were Ilocanos, some were Tagalogs, they were practicing Eskima. And the first, one of the first persons that I met then was uh, the late uh, Manong Leo Heron. He was 10 years older than me, you know. And uh, I also uh, came to know later on, by, by reference, uh, the late Cabales. Uh, they were good friends. Uh, and he became my friend too because I happened to be a minister of a church of which his cousin was a member of our church who was a bishop and I went to introduce that bishop to uh, Angel Cabales and that's where he, we get to know each other and became good friends. Anyway, uh, back in 1920, my father came to this country. That was 10 years before I was born. And he stayed in Minneapolis, Minnesota, in St. Paul, Minnesota, and in Seattle, Washington. He taught Eskrima there. I found out later on, just in when, after 10 years in this country, or about 15 to 20 years in this country, that when I went to conduct a seminar in, uh, in uh, Seattle, Washington, the student of my dad's student came to me and uh, and said, we have, uh, we have learned a little bit of your dad's screamer. We are a student of your dad's student who was a priest. Father Puno was his name. And this guy, uh, Istigoy is his name, Junishi Istigoy, came to me and uh, said, uh, I learned only a few of the art of your father. And I asked him, and uh, he, dis he disclosed to me the, the terms in the dialects. I thought he was just kidding, but I found out that he was one of the guys who uh, could verify the terms. I learned the art, he said, only a few of it, but in the dialect. He said, Duyok Pat Saboy Tagbat Balsig. Wow, I said to myself, That's, that is a verification because I am the only one who knew the terms and that guy had spoken to me in the very terms that I knew. My dad was in this country and he taught Eskrima way back in 1920, 1921. That's why on my logo, on my, my vest, uh, all, I have the 1921 when my dad, after one year, assuming that he taught one year after he came to this country. And then I found out later on, Manu Liu Heron was practicing the same Kabarwan, Eskrima Kabarwan or Arnis Kabarwan. Uh, as my dad. So, well, they came from adjacent provinces, Pangasinan and La Union in the Philippines. And so, among the uh, Ilocano speaking tribes, Ilocanos or Ilocos speaking tribes, they use the term Kabarwan, meaning uh, art of the barons, or it may mean the latest uh, style or technique. That is how I got involved, and from that time on, uh, here in this, in Fresno, I also was practicing Kabarwan and was showing what I knew. I knew just a little bit of the art, but uh, there was a saying in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king, in the in la tierra de los ciegos, el tuerto es el rey. I knew a little bit and I shared whatever I knew to the old people here who had come to this country way back when they were only teenagers and they have never gone back to the Philippines. And that's how uh, I came to be in love with many of the martial artists here, whatever is their style, I became a inter-stylist and inter-tribe uh, inter or inter-system uh, teacher uh, and practitioner of the martial art of 
Eskrima, Arnes, or, or Kabarwan. During my practice of Eskrima and uh, fellowship with many martial artists of various styles, I have uh, found out that uh, I have learned from them. I've seen what they have uh, been practicing and uh, we can always learn from somebody's uh, teachings and somebody's uh, style. I learn from them and in the same manner, probably many have been influenced in my teaching and they have also learned a little bit from what I know. It's just a different way of cooking the same chicken. They have uh, a way of cooking adobo, for example, or chicken, another way of cooking it, and other, other groups doing the same, the same thing in a different way. And I consider that a, a plus, not a minus, because what it did was it brought the art of the Philippines to the forefront so that many, today many people uh, in many places, they have known Eskrima. In fact, in the militaries, they have uh, uh, pugilism, pugilistic fighting with the staff and uh, with a, like a boxing glove at the end, they have that system. and. Uh, the art of Eskrima has had an influence not only physically uh, and ethically in, in the other martial arts, but this I found out. I have not, although as a preacher, I have not, I have not been mixing, uh, taking advantage of the art in order to preach. I found out that many have come under my influence. I know I can count several guys who through my little influence have gone to become, have entered the ministry. That was not my intention that they go into the ministry, but to help them become better people, better person, better uh, citizen of this country. And lo and behold, some of them have taken the step of uh, going farther into the higher realms of martial art. The physical battle, physical martial art is only physical. There is actually a battle ongoing between uh, the forces of good and evil, in the high realms of arts, and they are all fighting for the, uh, battling for the minds and the hearts of people in the, uh, in the high realms, and uh, people can take a stand on that. Uh, the physical battle is only physical. It can help them become mentally alert, strong, fast, and many have succeeded in becoming, uh, becoming um, uh, high in the field of the society, you know, become popular, become uh, actors and become uh, internationally known uh, leaders and teachers of the art. Also, those that are in the low profile, they have become better persons, better Christians and better citizens of this country. That is a plus in, in what we have contributed, what the art has contributed to people who have taken the martial art. They have become more disciplined, more uh, using the art to enlarge the circle of friends like me, that my aim was to enlarge my circle of friends using the martial art, not to create enemies. And uh, I hope I will succeed in that in getting friends like uh, you all today and many others that are in, not only in this country, but throughout the world, have become friends of mine. I'm making a list of all those that have come under my influence and has gone into my circle of friends, I don't want to make a circle of or a lines of enemies. After getting to know a lot of martial artists in various fields, whether it's karate, judo, jiu-jitsu, or boxing, I have come across uh, people and leaders from not only in this country, but also from another country. And because of the association that I found with these uh, great people, I have enlarged my circle of friends and I have also been elevated to a higher, uh, coming up to their level. They, I'm here and they're coming up. I, now I am uh, almost on par, on level with them. Modesty aside, in 1995, I was inducted into the Hall of Fame for Grandmaster something of the, the art. Then in 1996, in absentia, I was inducted uh, in Florida under Grandmaster 
Sanchez uh, uh, World uh, Association of Martial Arts. And in 1999, modesty aside, I've been inducted into the World Martial Art Hall of Fame. And among uh, four people who were given the doctorate of martial art, there was one white guy, black guy, and a Mexican guy, and others. I happen to be the only Filipino with a bald, flat-nosed, uh, brown American. And uh, there were four of us, and I was the only one who was given, uh, well, all of us were given the doctorate of martial art and the, uh, and the honor of uh, Lifetime Merit Award of Honor. And modest aside, I thought, since I was the only Filipino, in the 30-year history of the World Martial Art Hall of Fame, there was none before me and there was none after me given the doctorate of martial art. And I take pride in using the do word doctor. I did not pay a penny for it. I did not owe 50,000 or 100,000 in order to earn a degree of doctor martial art. I, I'm just happy that uh, I'm recognized as such. And I sometimes claim, you know, I am the first and the only doctor of Filipino, world's first Filipino doctor of martial art. Well, I, I'm not bragging, I'm just saying that this is a fact. And when I get associated with professors like you and other doctors, I said, well, I am also a little bit of a... But the whole thing is this. I came to this country with this purpose, to pay back to America for what American soldiers have done to us. And I came to this country to pay back to America. And my ministry here is not only in teaching martial art as a means of supporting my ministry to pay back American ministry. I am also the, I call myself the uh, prime minister of payback American ministry. Oh, I get a kick out of that, my friend. Thank you. Basic tub is stationary. That's, that's just for middle, that's just one out of 18 ways to disarm a middle against middle thrust. Now, for an underlap. That's a circumcision technique. <laughs> 